celebrate this feast of the visitation. We begin by contemplating our sins and asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. Reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. 
Shout for joy, O God of Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exalt with all your heart, O God of Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to hear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one singing a festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God I am dear in my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my Savior. With joy, he will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name among the nations. Make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted his name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel.
is cut to the help of this servant Israel. Please remember his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this uh, Feast of the Visitation, this is the feast day because it's unlike some other feast days of Mary, this one's in the scriptures. It comes right, right out of the Gospel, the Gospel of Luke. A couple of things in here. These songs of Elizabeth and Mary. There's a strong tradition of women in the Old, Old Testament. It's Hannah, the most famous, of the Samuel, and, um, and others. These songs of what God is doing in, in the life, the life of Israel, what God is doing on earth, um, that the hopes of the people are being fulfilled. So the hopes of the people, the hope for Hannah and her son Samuel, and then for the, for the people of Israel, Samuel will be one of the, the great, one of the great prophets. And of course, John the Baptist, uh, the great prophet. Then, then we have the Messiah, of Jesus. So God is working through these women to bring about something great for all of Israel and for the whole, for the whole earth. Here at the end, with, uh, with, uh, with Mary, so there's there's a strong tradition of these, and they, they kind of mirror each other. Uh, did Mary really say these words? No one will ever know. Uh, if, if Luke was. Talking to her years later, 40 years later, that she really remember exactly what she said at that point, 40 years ago. But it's it's a, it's a literary, literary ploy. This is what it, Mary and Elizabeth were together for three months. What did they talk about? Uh, they, they had to talk about something, and so that fulfillment, God is doing, and God does. And we heard about it in the first reading as well. That God is doing something. Even if the people don't see it, and even in our time, you know, we're not much different. We want to see big bangs, trumpet blasts, and thunder, lightning, whatever it may be. Great big announcement. Okay, everybody, pay attention. Pay attention. There's something. God is doing something great. God is doing something now. Pay attention. But it's not how God works. We we hear it over and over again. That's these women are talking. Despite people going about their daily business, not being aware, God is at work in the world, doing something, doing something great for the people, bringing about whether a great prophet or him coming into the world quietly under the shadows of the daily life. God is working. God is working in our lives as well. And still working today. Not with trumpet blasts and volcanoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and everything else. Not with great signs and wonders in the skies and dancing suns. But quietly, under our noses, God is still working in our daily lives. He's there, present. We only have to see Him. We only have to look, open our eyes, look back at the fact of what's going on, look forward, look forward in hope. Another thing about these is, and I've probably mentioned this before, uh, there was a woman who did a, wrote a book on medieval spirituality, so particularly women's medieval spirituality, and uh, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She, she wasn't a Catholic at that time, she was since converted. But one of the things that people probably, or particularly maybe women, would meditate uh, because the devotion to Mary was different. Different. It changes throughout the centuries. But to meditate on, on this passage, what was it like for Mary to carry the Lord in her womb? What would that have been like to meditate on that? Here's the Lord, his blood flowing through yours, uh, his body, literally his, his physical body being there. Remember, people didn't, people didn't receive communion. Uh, as often as people do now. And 
So meditate. That is the view of the spiritual community. Christ. Really, the body of Christ. And just, not just the Eucharistic body of Christ, but the truth of the body of the physical. You can feel it there. Flowing through your body. And caring it. And life. Now, what would that have been like for Mary? And how can I, when I receive the Eucharist, have that same sense, have the same spirituality, the same outlook that Mary would have, looking at home, looking forward to what God is doing, uh, not looking for glory to the but, but doing a simple business, carrying Christ along with us, and caring for him, and for him as a child, loving him as an adult. All of this is vision, visioning his life the one that you carry, the one that you had in your body. It's a, it's a great meditation. Great meditation, even, even for today. What, what would that mean? Uh, a great Eucharistic meditation on what was that like for Mary? To really carry the physical body, the physical body in your womb, in your body, that Christ is there. <laughs> Knowing that the Eucharist, Christ still, still carry it in a particular way. Maybe not as a physical baby, but carrying it particularly through life. And how are we to react? And how are we not to think as a hope, as a love? Finally, also be Memorial Day. This is visitation. Be perfect for, for Memorial Day weekend, as many people go visit uh, graves, go visit graves of loved ones, uh, visit the tombs. That, uh, we honor the, uh, the uh, veterans. Obviously, this was Armistice Day for, for the veterans of World War I, and then after World War II, we become all veterans for those who have given their lives. But we also oftentimes go visit to the of veterans or not veterans alike. That, that memory of those people, for what they've done, they've done in our lives. Maybe parents, children, others in our lives, what they've done. As, as a memorial, you know, the Mass is a memorial. We, we live for Christ. He says this once again. Uh, memorial Day not being quite the same thing. But remember that, that Christ came for their salvation as well. And we go and pray at the graves. We take care of them, clean them up a little bit, bring flowers. It's all part of our memory. Uh, God has done work for these people in the past. Gives a work for us today, a work for us tomorrow. The hopes of those, the dreams of those, whether fought in the wars or our family members who were not veterans, still live, still live on. Uh, forgiveness for their sins, also hopes for, for a better world, for a more godly -like world, still continues to, to be our, our goal today and to carry the memory of other people. We're not, just, we're not just the only people who've ever lived. We bring those hopes and those dreams of the people in the past into life. Let us stand. We now bring our needs to the Heavenly Father, trusting in His love and care and in His ways. We pray for our Holy Mother in the Church, the needs of all her children around the world. The church may be sufficient to provide for special needs of uh, all. We pray to the Lord. Lord for leaders of nations and all whom they serve, for the grace of God lead them in the way to what they say and to do. For peace, we pray to the Lord. For those struggling in decision making, particularly medical decisions, the Holy Spirit help them to see clearly the path that God has invited them to walk. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah, For all of us, may we be given the courage to follow Christ wherever He may lead us. We pray to the Lord. Lord yeah, For all those who have died. Find eternal rest and loving arms of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah, man. And for all those.
friends, we have the sadness in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah, yeah. Father, on this great feast of visitation, we recognize Mary as our mother and our model of discipleship. Through our prayers, and answer them this day in your faithfulness and mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
your church. Proclaim your greatness, O oh God. We have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John the Baptist left for joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive the sacrament, the same ever living Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may you be with you. If I have had to pray for God's blessing, may God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will, in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you, who are devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. Amen. The blessed Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the God of you, may you forever.